Imagine you're standing at a distance from a window and someone inside the room is talking. You're outside, the windows are shut and from where you are it feels completely silent. What if I told you that with the right setup you could listen in from a distance using nothing more than a laser beam? When we speak, our voice pushes air in front of us, creating tiny pressure waves. These waves travel through the air, they are literally vibrating the molecules, and when they hit something like a glass window, they cause it to vibrate too. The vibrations are incredibly small, far too tiny to see, but they're real. And here's the cool part, those vibrations carry the exact same information as the original sound. So if someone says a word, the window vibrates in the same pattern as their voice saying that word. Now if we shine a laser at the vibrating window, the laser's reflection will also vibrate slightly. Not enough for your eyes to detect, but enough that a sensitive light detector can pick up the small changes. And if we measure how that reflected beam shifts, even by a microscopic amount, we can reconstruct the original sound. That's the basic idea behind a laser microphone, and in this video I'm going to show you how I built one using just a few components and the problems I ran into. The first thing I needed was a way to detect the vibrations of the window caused by the sound inside the room. Originally, I started with a basic photodiode, which is essentially just a mini solar cell which converts light into an electrical signal. The photodiode itself can detect changes in light intensity, but the voltage it produces is very small, way too small to plug directly into a computer. I started off planning to use a standard op-amp, like a LM358 or a TL072, and build my own amplifier circuit around the photodiode. I was going to use a trans-impedance amplifier configuration, which basically means converting a tiny current from the photodiode into a voltage using a resistor in the feedback loop of the op-amp. But to do that right, I had to choose the correct resistor to set the gain, think about filtering out high frequency noise, and possibly even add a second stage to the op-amp to boost the signal further. The more components I added when simulating, the more complicated the theoretical circuit became, and that's when I started looking for a cleaner solution. After doing some research, I came across the OPT-101P. It's a chip from Texas Instruments that combines a photodiode and a precision amplifier all in one. It's designed exactly for this kind of thing, detecting light and giving a clean voltage output. To power it, I decided to use three 1.5 volt AA batteries in series, which gives me 4.5 volts. This is within the chip's recommended operating range. I could have tried to use USB power or a wall adapter, but batteries give me a much cleaner signal and I know exactly what voltage I'm getting. The circuit is also electrically isolated, which is ideal for sensitive analog measurements like this. I also added a 1 microfarad capacitor between the chip's output and the computer, which acts as a low-pass filter, smoothing out the noise and helping isolate the lower frequency motion that actually came from the sound vibrations. I assembled what I had so far on the breadboard, and this is what it looks like. I will also need a laser, and for testing purposes, I decided to use a visible red laser. However, if you were actually building a spy device and needed to be discreet, an infrared laser would be best. You would also need to design a system which can effectively align the infrared laser with the photodiode. It's also important to consider how exactly the photodiode works with the laser alignment. If the laser beam is smaller than the photodiode, placing it in the center won't cause any noticeable voltage changes during small movements. In that case, positioning the beam near the edge is necessary to detect changes. But if the beam is larger than the photodiode, even slight shifts will cause voltage changes due to the gradient of the beam's intensity. In this case, the circumference of the beam is larger, so perfect alignment on the edge of the photodiode is not required. When testing, I'm going to be using a cardboard box with a small piece of see-through plastic to act as my building and window. To produce the sound coming from inside the building, I'll place a speaker inside the box. The last component I need to add is a way to actually listen to the signal being produced from the circuit using my laptop. At first I tried stripping the end of an aux cable and connecting the signal directly into my laptop's microphone jack. I thought it would just pick up as a microphone, but it wasn't showing as an audio input option. After doing some research, the reason it didn't work is because most laptop microphone jacks aren't decided to accept raw analog input like that 
They expect specific voltage levels, impedance, and a TRRS plug configuration. And even then, many laptops won't recognize a bare signal unless it's coming from a proper microphone. So even though my circuit was working in theory, I couldn't test it as my laptop didn't know what to do with the input. The solution I found was to use a USB sound card, just a cheap external USB to 3.5mm mic adapter. These act like proper sound interfaces and are recognized by a computer as a real audio device. Once I plugged the output of my circuit into the mic port of the USB card, it finally showed up in my recording software. The computer now treated it as a microphone and I could start recording and listening to the signal in real time. The first test I did was during the day, so there is ambient light present, however the microphone is still able to pick up the music. The second and third tests were done at night, and the sound is much clearer as there is almost no ambient light present. Test one, test two, test three, A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the laser microphone, a simple setup that turns vibrations in a window into audio using just a laser, a photodiode, and simple circuitry. There's still a lot of room for improvement with this setup. One idea I had is using multiple photodiodes with multiple beams aimed at slightly different spots on the window. By comparing the signals, it would be possible to cancel out background noise, making the audio much clearer. Another improvement is to add a polarizing filter in front of the photodiode. That would help block out ambient light and reflections from nearby surfaces, so only the light coming directly from the laser gets detected. A big improvement for ease of use would be a mount with fine adjustments for aligning the beam precisely, or even possibly an auto alignment system. I have left a link to all the parts in the description. Thank you for watching.